let's continue with the course by solving our bugs. But before we do that, we need to actually know where the bug is. So if we go back and check, so if you remember, we turn on the switch, we let the lid open fully, and as the arm is moving, we switch the switch off, right? So look at this. And there, you can see that, that that's where the issue is. And so let's bring up the node editor and see where we can uh, change things. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this up. I think I forgot to add a variable here. So I'm gonna add this. And then this is going to be called, I think, arm extended, right? Or extended, question mark, extended, sorry. It's almost like the, in the beginning joke. So that's going to be Boolean. Let's annotate a little bit. In terms of annotating, what I want to annotate is where the calls are. So this here comes from, what is it? This is going to be switch off, so it's SW off switch off and the trigger source is done by one so that's because of the switch the lid open question mark is considered true what we need to do is to also have another thing where another one here let's create another waypoint i think we should drag these down I'm going to drag these down too. So this is switch off trigger source one, lid open true. And then we're going to have the second type, which we're going to allow is when the switch off was triggered by us, the user, and the lid is fully open, question mark is going to be true. Also, the arm extended is true, right? Because when the arm is in the middle of this extension, we call this, right? So arm extended equals to true. This should fix the thing where we had a weird movement, right? So yeah, so what we need to do is just like we have, we're using trigger source here, we're going to get these variables into the switch because this is where the triggers are happening and so we need to go there to change it so here this is where we're going to work on this new uh, conditions we also have this here it's going to be a little hard to annotate uh, since we don't have a lot of space but we can probably just do this uh, so we're not quite done yet annotating so that's that and then i also want we have three different conditions for for how the switch can turn off basically, right? So, so this is gonna be switch off. Trigger source is gonna be us, so zero. And lid is open is true. Lid open is true. Ah, right, yes, arm extended, we need to add this. So if the arm isn't extended, then we call the direct close from, you know, from the switch. So, okay, let me just think about the chain. So we first check whether, which source it is, and then we check if the lid is open and if the arm is extended, right? So let's add that. So here it's gonna be trigger source zero Let's move this over. So I think we're supposed to check first if the lid is open. So we're going to get lid open, question mark, which is this value saved in here in the other blueprint. So we're going to check if the lid is open or not. We now check whether the arm, we're going to get the arm, and get arm extended here. Just like that. So in this case, arm extended is true. Let's go back in here. We call retract to rest position. Let's just test it out first, right? So we duplicate that. And if arm ex extended is false, then we do a direct close. So 
we use this one. Now let's move this over. And what we got next, it's going to be probably this one, right? So in this one, if any time the switch is triggered by the arm, it's we, we always close no matter what, and we don't really have to worry about any other conditions. So get rid of that, and that should be it. And so this is actually okay. Okay, and fingers crossed this is going to work. Let's compile and save this. Let's go back. Let's try to replicate it again. Boom. There you go. We just fixed the first problem. But there is another problem, uh, which you'll see in a moment, is that while the arm is going down, turn the switch on. And so we want the arm to come back. Now that's going to cause another issue. So let's do this again. See? So this is already broken now because the lid is closed even though the switch is in the on position, right? And so for that, we need to fix again. Okay, so let's go back into the node editor. And this is going to be an issue regarding the switch on, right? So we all have all the cases for switch off, which is fully covered now. And I think we're going to have to make quite a bit of space. leave more space so that we have all this figured out maybe we can just do this move these back yeah that looks fine now so the open lid this one is let's comment we can finally annotate so here let's just extend this a little bit let's call this one switch on and this is when the lid right the lid open is considered false i think with these ones we should just take it's the same process so we allow it to directly open if the lid is considered false for open and is not extended that's fine i'm happy with that and what was the issue, right? We need direct access to this as well now, right? That was the issue. Let me just add this in, maybe around here, so it's easier to see. All right, and then let's annotate once again. Okay, let's do that. A little bit of this, okay, it's too small, yeah. I'm gonna put it up maybe, that's fine. So switch on, the second type of switch on, is when the lid is considered open to true and the arm extended extended is considered to be false it's kind of a mirror of this and this is the mirror of this yeah and it makes sense right the reason why we have three types of off situations is because we have two that can be triggered by us and the single type which is triggered by the arm but the open can only be triggered by us and those are limited to two types so basically we're going to do the same thing let's go back here and let's go into our switch and we can start working on this upper part Okay, so let's check how it was done. So first we're gonna check if lid is open and see if it's false. So we're gonna work on this direct open lid first. So we're gonna first see, very similar to these, we're gonna copy this and let's see. So lid is open, it's false. And then the arm extended is considered False is it? So false and false, we allow the direct lid open. Just like that, right? So false and false, I'm gonna make more space. And what was the second case is when we try to open it, the lid is considered open and the arm extended is false. So let's see. 
here is and then we check once again so you, don't you think that's a little bit redundant we have the two same checks happening and so I think we should refactor our code. No, actually, no, this is just going to be how it is. All right. And what do we call? We're going to call move. Move to turn off. Right. That should be fine. I'm going to make more space so that we can stack these on top of each other. You know, my coding brain is telling me there is for sure a way to clean this up. It's probably redundant code somewhere. We should probably be able to do something like this. So I'm going to just like make a note here. Just make it cleaner. So. So this is always going to be false. So then we just need to do this. And then we just do this, right? So true or false, yeah. So in theory, I, I'm pretty sure this is going to be exactly the same thing, but it's cleaner. And you should always strive to achieve that when you're coding. So this looks better than this, right? So. I am pretty sure this is exactly how it is. Yep. So I'm going to clonk that there. And fingers crossed it's going to work. Compile and save. Let's go in here. Let's see if it works. There you go. I think we just fixed it. I feel like there's a bit of a delay. Maybe we should probably speed up the lid opening speed. And I'm guessing perhaps it's the arm thing. It's going to overcomplicate it. So let me just make sure it's robust. Oh, I think we might have messed something up there. So there is a problem is that we haven't been able to properly block this part here. It's going to be kind of complicated. But we can definitely do it. Let's do it. So let's see. And so the issue we're facing is on this chain here, when we're switching it off, trigger source is us, the lid is open, and the arm is already moving to switch it off. We need to force this animation to basically reverse, like basically stop it, right? And so. Basically, I think we should add something here like event uh, force force stop something like that to to the arm arm tip arm tip yeah and so that we can add by doing a custom event and we do force stop and I would say we need to change it like this because we're going to use the same method. All right, let's move this down. Still not 100% sure if this is going to work, but let's do this. Okay, and we need to call this somewhere. And so, of course, we call that within, where is that? That's when we are switching it off and it's us. And the arm extended is true. So it's going to be called force stop. And I think the issue will go away, hopefully. Let's compile and save. Let's try to do it. Yeah, I think this is a, oh, it, that definitely didn't work. Um, hmm. So there's obviously a logic issue somewhere. Oh yeah, no, actually, we only want to force stop it if this is actually already running, right? So we'll take the tip anim, let's duplicate that. And you could, we could ask, is playing? And I think what the issue was that sometimes we 
we'll click this and actually the animation is playing backwards and that's a problem of course so let's do b here do reverse and that i think will do it let's move this up a little bit And now it should be idiot proof. Oh, what the heck? Okay, so I found what the issue was. I think basically because we're using play, this is what the issue is because this is kind of always supposed to play right from the beginning. And so actually we had this one correctly, but this one is should be reversed, but the play from start has to be like this. Uh, because I think basically when we were jamming the buttons, you know, the playhead was like going blah, blah, blah in different positions and it got stuck somewhere. And so it couldn't play the animation from the beginning, right? And so I, you know, I got it to fix it in my example. So that's fine, right? So now if I just jam this and yep. There you go, I think this is as robust as we can do it, guys. All right, so you might be surprised to hear that this is the end of the course, and it's that in the follow-up multiple switch section, it became clear it's too complex for beginners. In fact, towards the end, it was advanced. But look, if there is enough demand for it, I'll be happy to put it up on the Interact Patreon membership. Otherwise, I hope you learn a lot from this course. If you know somebody that might find this course helpful, please share it with them. And of course, subscribe to keep up to date with future learning content from Interact.